Raiders are viable. There's no doubt about that. 24 minutes past the hour, and we're joined now by the uh, longtime Raiders CEO, former CEO, first female ever to hold that post in the NFL. Uh, she's a brilliant woman. You know her from Tops. I love her. Consider her a good friend at this point. And a couple of years ago, she handed in the charts and the salary cap stuff for a TV camera. And I have to say, Amy, this is the first time since your second career, uh, or maybe actually third, given your legal background, where the Raiders actually matter a little bit. This is fun for you. How are you, kiddo? I'm doing well. I have one gripe with the people in America who program the televisions mm -hmm. on cross-country flights. Once again, we see that East Coast bias, uh, and there I was flying all the way home from CBS New York to Los Angeles, and did I get the Raider Charger game? No. Nope. No. I got the Cowboy Giants game. You'd think that all of you guys think the world revolves around New York. Yes, it does. We have an option for the, the other York game, Giants. at least. Yes. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and I'll tell you, and you know what's funny? Before I moved out there for a minute, I didn't, not that I didn't believe it, I didn't really even care to probe into the depth of the East Coast bias, but it clearly exists. It's There's no doubt struggle, about man. it. It's a, the struggle is real, man. Oh, come on. She's right. It's, no, all, she's about, right. it's all about programming. You know why? Because Madison Avenue is, is in New York. And that's you know why. what? Um, I'm new to Twitter, as you know, mm -hmm. and I tweeted out in response to many Raider fans tweeting and asking, was I watching the game? I tweeted out, I can't watch it. We don't have it on this airplane and just less the Raider Nation I must have gotten a hundred responses with audio links personal codes to fans slingbox accounts nice. and you know they all just pitched in the Raider Nation did I like very that. nice yeah don't tell the NFL because it's rebroadcasting oh. <laughs> <laughs> without the express written consent <laughs> exactly you know? KPT. yes I'm sorry I won't be in studio with you next week, but rather joining you by satellite from California, because uh, my Raiders and your jet. Mm -hmm, wow. Mm -hmm. Well, last time that happened, and I was actually at the game, McFadden ripped off about a 75-yard screen pass against about when that was when the defense was still, Bart, he went, he ran right through Bart with the defense. We have to come up with a little bet here. Now, my, my Vegas cronies are telling me, Amy, that the Raiders are plus one. So it's a very tight spread. We have to come up with the bet now. Maybe you can lean on resilient Raider Nation to come up with a bet that we both agree upon. We'll put it to Twitter. And if my Jets win, well, you know, you'll have to do something. And if your Raiders win, then I'll have to do something. Deal? Well, you know, it, it's a deal. You know I don't bet money. No, no, not I money. I bet ice cream. <laughs> Get uh, Big can, Mike involved? We can, we consider a Mikey likes it ice cream <laughs> bet, or we can, we can think of something else. And remember also that by definition, the home team, depending on who you ask, yep. is always given two and a half to three points. I know. So, you know, it's just very, very interesting. Well, let me ask you this. From an executive point of view, um, when, and the Raiders, the talent base was, was, the cupboards were bare, as we know, at the end. Right when you left, it was pretty bare. What is the first step? Because, I mean, they've got some weapons that seem to be around, for, are going to be around for a long time. When it's that dire as it was, what step one to getting back to being respectable, do you think? Well, I think the, the team has done a couple of things. Um, and, and let me just say this, and, and when I say things like this, I'm, I'm accused of defending Al Davis. And you know what? If that's the worst accusation someone wants to level, level it away. <laughs> People have inquired as to why he made um, certain football moves that he made in the last years of his life, because they were viewed as, quote, not for the long-term best interest of the team, close quote. And my response to that is, it's a fair enough criticism, but I think we all have to realize that people define long-term differently when they're approaching 80 and in a critical health situation than they might when they're 40 or 50 or 60. So I certainly don't disagree with the criticism that's leveled that some of Al's football moves were not designed to be for the long-term success. But I also say... Who among us might view long-term differently if we were facing our own mortality and wanted to see what we could achieve in the last few years of our lives as opposed to knowing we had decades to go? All of that said, um, you know, the team has had very, very high draft picks given the, the, the way they finished, you know, even after Al passed away in 2011. Um, 2012 was a horrible finish, 2013 was a horrible finish, 2014 was a horrible finish. So there were some very, very high draft picks, mm -hmm. and the building blocks are there. Khalil Mack in his second year, Derek Carr in his second year, Amari Cooper in his first year. Brandon, you know that I've shared this a number of times on Tops with you. I think perhaps the single biggest move of late, in addition to those, 
is the change in head coach from Dennis Allen to Jack Del Rio. Mm-hmm. Jack Del Rio is a leader, and the team is following him, and that wasn't the case before. No, and you have said that in no uncertain terms. Um, Dennis Allen just didn't have the room. I'm with you. It's Amy Trask, longtime Raiders CEO, uh, now doing the TV thing and doing it well on Tops on CBS Sports Network with me and a few others. Uh, just a great person talking some football here on CBS Sports Radio. Yeah, Amy, the, it's interesting when you look at the Raiders because they're still in it. The first, I mean, we're still early in the season, but they're still in it uh, at 3-3, three and three, uh, talking about the playoff chase. Uh, but I wonder long term, you know, where does this team go as one stadium wise, because they have to get out of O.co. And we all know the whole Los Angeles, whatever, conundrum with Dean Spanos and Cronky. Where, where does this team go? How do they grow and build from what Al built and what some people will say destroyed and now trying to rebuild it back up? Well, you know, you raise a fascinating question and one which, you know, we can discuss at length anytime you wish because I know we don't necessarily have your time to do it now. The, the Los Angeles market is just a fascinating, fascinating business paradigm. The owner of the Raiders made very, very clear in an interview he gave yesterday, and of course I know this now because sitting on the airplane about 7,000 people sent me links, <laughs> um, that Los Angeles is his goal. Make no mistake about it. When he comes out and says things, we bought the land, it's fully entitled, we're ready to go. Actions speak louder than words, right? Mm -hmm. The team has not purchased land in the Bay Area, which it could. The team has contributed to purchasing land in Los Angeles. So I do believe that Los Angeles is the goal and the aim and the intent and the desire of Raider ownership and management. Whether that comes to be or not is is a different issue. You are absolutely right. O.co needs to be replaced. I happen to believe that the site on which O.co sits is the best site of any stadium in the National Football League in terms of accessibility, ingress, egress, and most importantly, public transportation. But the team hasn't purchased land in the Bay Area. The team has purchased land in Los Angeles. Actions speak louder than words, right, men? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you know I don't share your enthusiasm for the uh, the way you assess this the, the land. I, I get it in terms of BART, which is phenomenal. The accessibility to all the highways, I get it. But I, I guess my pro- – I think of it more from a baseball point of view, Amy, because football, it's an isolated, you know, eight times a year, a couple of the summer games and, and hopefully a few playoff games. But the reason why I think the Coliseum is hurting – is because there's no bars, there's really no foot traffic like a lot of these modern baseball stadiums have, where you could go, you know, get off the uh, off the get off of work, whether you're in finance or whatever, go and have a couple of pops, and and then eventually meander into the stadium. They don't have that in Oakland, and I think that's a big problem for the A's. I think that's a sensational point, and that's why so many of the potential redevelopment plans for a stadium or stadiums on that site involve an urban renaissance and urban redevelopment of the area around it. Yep. You're right, and you remember this from the Bay Area. When people come to that stadium, either on their way or when they leave, if they want to stop at a restaurant, they're driving somewhere else as opposed to walking. Yep. You know, there's one other point. Um, people ask me a lot about the relocation guidelines four teams moving, and and let's be very, very direct and and forthright about this. The guidelines will be applied or not applied however the membership of the league, the owners, wish to apply or not apply them. Um, In order to qualify for relocation, you must prove that you're in a failed market. Well, that market is defined as the 75-mile radius around Oakland, not simply as the site in Oakland. So, you know, if the team wants to look at other sites within that 75-mile area, They've stated clearly, repeatedly, they're not interested in sharing with the 49ers, but there are other other places within that 75-mile re- radius. I'm going to put this to Twitter. Uh, we're going to come up with a viable bet that both sides agree upon equally. Um, might have to take a few days to sort through this, but we'll have one before we tee it up on Sunday. I'll see you. Uh, I won't see you in studio this. Actually, I won't see you this week coming up, but I'll. I'll talk to you down the line. Well, but you'll we... see me on that little screen they pop up because I will be joining you. I will just simply be doing it from Los Angeles or, as I like to say, 
from the beach. From the beach. And we'll also see on Tuesday, we need to talk 8 Eastern, um, historic show on, on many levels. And um, you're doing a great job there. Amy, no offense, I love you, but we're about to wax your boys. We're going to stump the, we're going we're gonna to stamp out the enthusiasm uh, of Raider Nation very swiftly on Sunday. Just leave it at that, PT, kiddo. I'm not, I'm not going to argue with you today. I'm going to save our argument for next week on television. Smart. But I do want to tell you, um, you are a trem- both of you, BT on television, BT and Tiki on radio. Couldn't ask for better teammates than the two of you. You're one of our favorites. You know that. Thanks, Amy. I'll see you soon, kiddo. Appreciate Thanks, you, Amy. There she goes.